Hi there, my name is Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be my mid-year book freak out tag. This is the first time I'm ever doing this video because it's the first time I've been on YouTube to do this video. Although we are approaching one year of me having started making this YouTube channel, which is very exciting. I'm excited for this video to kind of reflect on what books have been hits so far this year and what books have maybe been a bit of a miss. I will say, looking back on the year so far, it's not been the best. Even the books that I've given five stars to, whilst I do love them and they are five star reads, I haven't been feral for any of them, if you know what I mean, compared to last year when I just became absolutely obsessed with Fallad of Never After and Spells for Forgetting and Rouge. But anyway, let's get into it. So the first prompt is what's the best book that you've read in 2024 so far? And for that, I've chosen Penance by Eliza Clark. This was my second five star read of the year so far. Second only to Boy Parts, which is also by Eliza Clark and was also incredible. Penance is a thriller which which is written as if it's a true crime novel from the perspective of a journalist who is morally grey, shall we say, who is trying to get to the bottom of a terrible crime that was committed in this small town in England where a girl was murdered by three of her classmates. I devoured this book along with Boy Parts. I read them both in the same weekend and honestly it was a bit intense. I shouldn't have read them back to back in such quick succession because they were quite heavy. But Penance was such a standout read for me. I think probably because I myself really enjoy true crime, but I'm obviously aware that there is some questions of like whether true crime is ethical in the sense that we're turning victim's trauma into something commercialized and something that can be consumed. So as someone who likes true crime, but is aware of that kind of morally gray side of it, I found it really interesting to read a book that was so clearly written to comment on the way our current society consumes true crime. And I think it was done really, really effectively and really, really well. Like not only is the plot really compelling and has you invested in this fictionalized true crime story, it then makes you reflect upon why you are so invested in stories like this. I loved it. I loved it so much. The next prompt is the best sequel you've read so far in 2024. This one, <laughs> I don't know if this is a cheat because it's playing a bit fast and loose with the term sequel, but I've chosen to go with Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage. This is a sequel in the sense that it is book number two in the Rebel Blue Ranch romance series, following on from Done and Dusted. It features characters from Done and Dusted, but the story isn't a continuation of Done and Dusted. You could read this without having read the first book. So in that sense, I don't know if it counts as a sequel, but I am counting it because this was such a standout follow-up book for me. I enjoyed Done and Dusted, but it was kind of just a mid-romance. This was so nearly a five-star romance for me. I think I rated it 4.75 five stars at the time, but honestly, I think I'm gonna go back and rate it five stars because I just have not stopped thinking about it. I loved it so much. This is a cowboy romance which follows our main character, Ada, who is an interior designer who has moved to this small town in the Midwest in America, I think. And she is helping our other main character, Wes, design and redecorate this old house on their ranch. And obviously a love story ensues from that. It's very black cat golden retriever coded which I love. It features a male main character who is very sensitive and deals with an ongoing mental illness which I think is really really refreshing. It's really steamy, the spice is really really good. I just adored it so much. The first scene they're in together is just chef's kiss. I'm really excited for the third one but I'm also a bit nervous because I don't know if I'm gonna like any couple as much as I like this couple. The next prompt is a new release that I haven't read yet but I really want to. I find this one quite challenging because there's quite a few new releases that I haven't got round to reading yet because I'm not in the mood for it yet so it was hard for me to pick one because I'm not in the mood for them yet but I think the one that I'm most interested in reading is Where Sleeping Girls Lie by Farida Ibike Iamide. I recently 
read Four Years in a Funeral, a book that she co-wrote and I didn't love it. I haven't read any of her other work. I know she wrote Ace of Spades which is really popular but I am really excited to give her a go because this book sounds really really good and it sounds like it's right up my alley. It's a YA contemporary mystery. I think it's got dark academia vibes because it's set in an English boarding school. So from what I can gather our main character Sadie who has been homeschooled and is struggling to adjust to a boarding school life and when her roommate Elizabeth goes missing and everyone starts thinking she has something to do with it things start going weird and then she's also brought into the popular group of girls called the unholy trinity which i am obsessed with that name <laughs> I love it so much and I guess she's investigating the disappearance of her roommate. That whole aspect of it is giving kind of bunny vibes to me so I think it's going to be kind of bunny by Mona Awad but YA. I haven't heard much about it though but I think I'm really going to enjoy it. The next prompt is my most anticipated read for the rest of 2024 and this was so easy for me. It is Rewitched by Lucy Wood. Lucy Wood is a YouTuber who does kind of lifestyle videos and she has started doing a lot more book videos as well which have been amazing. I love her so much <laughs> and I'm so excited that she's written a book and she's written a witchy book. Mm. So let me read you the description for this book. Belladonna Blackthorne hasn't lost her magical spark but she hasn't seen it in a while either. Balancing work at her beloved lunar books with protecting it from her toxic boss who's running it into the ground and all the while concealing her witchcraft from the non-witches around her, Belle is burnt out. Perfecting the potential of her magic is the last thing on her mind, but when her 30th birthday brings a summons from her coven and a trial that tests her worthiness as a witch, Belle risks losing her magic forever. With the month of October to fix things and signs that dark forces may be working against her, Belle will need all the help she can get from the woman in her life, from an unlikely mentor, and even an infuriatingly handsome watchman who's sworn to protect her. With fine family, slow burn romance, and an uplifting message about self-love, this is the cozy autumnal read that you've been waiting for. Doesn't that just sound so perfect? It's coming out 19th of September, just in time for spooky season. I just think this is going to be so heartwarming and lovely and I think it's just so special as well because Lucy's like done videos since announcing the book about the, the writing process and everything and you can see how much she cares about it and how much it means to her that she's managed to do this thing and write this book and it's very inspiring to watch. Found family, slow burn romance, uplifting message about self-love, tick tick tick. I just I'm so excited. I can't wait. The next prompt is my biggest disappointment so far in the year and oh my gosh it really pains me to say this and this is why it's my biggest disappointment because it hurts so much to say this but it was How to End a Love Story by Yuling Kuang. Spoken about it before in other videos but I am such a big fan of Yuling Kuang. I love her YouTube films that she made. I think she's so inspiring, such a great filmmaker, such a great writer. I'm so excited that she's adapting Emily Henry's books to films. I think that's just like a perfect combination so I was so hyped for her debut novel. Novel. It was not bad by any means, like the writing is obviously good, but it was just too depressing for me. It was very much an angsty driven romance and sometimes I am in the mood for that but not in the mood this time. The book is all about a woman whose sister took her own life when she was a teenager by jumping out in front of a car and it's now like 10 years later our main character is reunited with the person who was behind the wheel who was in her year at school. They end up forming a relationship with each other and falling in love. How would they get past this trauma like with each other in each other's lives? I just, there was too much, too much to unpack, too much heaviness. I think it was a really big risk to write a book with this setup and expect a reader to buy into this relationship. I know some people have enjoyed it but for me I just couldn't get past the fact that the love interest had inadvertently killed her sister. So yeah, that was my biggest disappointment. The next prompt is the biggest surprise of 2024 so far and it is definitely Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent. This was my sister-in-law's pick for, or was it mine? No, I think it was my sister-in-law's pick for our book club this month. I loved it. I wasn't surprised so much that I really enjoyed it. From what I knew of the book, I went in expecting to really enjoy it because I'd heard it was kind of like Eleanor Oliphant vibes and I really enjoyed that book, but I did not expect to love it so much. I did not expect how dark it was going to be. I think I could completely not understood that this was a crime novel, <laughs> which seems really dumb. 
for me to not have grasped that because it literally says on the cover crime novel of the year. The way this book ends shook me to my core. This book is basically about our main character, Sally Diamond. At the beginning of the book, her dad dies and she, instead of reporting his death and going in the usual route you would when a loved one dies, she takes him out with the bins, takes him onto their farm and puts him in the incinerator to burn him. When people find out that she's done this, obviously everyone is a bit confused and wary. <laughs> a police investigation starts, but then then the story really starts to get going when Sally realises her dad has left her letters to read and she finds out that everything she knew about herself is false. She is adopted, which she knew, but where she was adopted from is a complete shock to her and we spend the rest of the book following her, trying to figure out more about her past, what happened in her past, whilst also coming out for shell more because the other thing about Sally is that she finds it difficult to socialise with other people so instead of tackling that her whole life she's just kind of since school's kept to herself, kept at home, only left the house to go to the shop and for necessities. So when her dad dies, she starts making an effort of making friends and forming relationships and learning how to be an adult and looking for work. And it's really heartwarming up until a point. I'm not gonna say any more in case you wanna read this because I highly recommend it. It really went places I wasn't expecting it to go and I absolutely adored it. The next prompt is a new favourite author and I think for this one I definitely have to go for Eliza Clark because I loved Boy Part so much that it made me go straight to her other book Penance which has obviously been my top book of the year. I gave them both five stars. I know that I'm gonna read anything else she comes out with. I think what's so incredible is that Boy Parts and Penance are written in quite different styles. Like Boy Parts is like kind of a, a satire, really, really dark, but also funny. And then Penance is, like I said, obviously written as if it's a true crime novel. And what I love most about her writing is that she is using her books to comment on things that really interest me. So like what I got from Boy Parts the most was that she was commenting on the male gaze versus the female gaze. The way I would describe it is that Boy Parts is like a female gaze version of American Psycho. And then Penance, like I said, is commenting on the ethics of true crime and how we consume true crime as a genre and if true crime should even be a genre. These are all things that I like to think about and I just really like the way she explores these themes and questions in her writing. The newest fictional crush in 2024 was so easy for me to answer and it is wit from What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. From the moment he stepped onto my page. I knew. I knew we were meant to be. I knew he was the one. He's the perfect level of bad boy but charming. He's only soft for her. He's got a really weird mystery surrounding him. He's got a past that he doesn't like to talk about. He runs hot and cold. He's handsome. He's sweet. He's sometimes cruel. He's perfect. I tell you who he reminds me of. He is giving me Will Herendale vibes from Clockwork Angel series by Cassandra Clare, which is the best series of Cassandra Clare. And I say that as someone who has only read Mortal Instruments and Infernal Devices <laughs> series. So I clearly know what I'm talking about. Will Herndale is one of my favorite book boyfriends of all time. And Wit was giving me Will Herndale vibes completely. So I think that's probably why I was drawn into him so completely from the very start. But oh my God. Fit. The next prompt is Noah's favourite character of 2024 and I thought this one was a little bit hard but I decided to go with Evie Cormack from Good Girl Bad Girl which is the first book in the Cyrus Haven detective thriller series. She's in all the rest of the books too and I think she's the first character I thought of because we've gotten to know her so well throughout this series. I think she's very complicated, she has a lot of drama from her past but she's also very funny and endearing and very much a survivor and I think that even when she does things that you, when you're reading you're just like please no, please don't do that, everything she does you understand why she's doing it you really empathize with her. I think she's lovely. I think she's a really strong character. I'm really excited to see where she goes in future books. The last book that came out was probably my least favorite in the series so far. And I think one of the main reasons 
why that was is because I feel like Michael Robotham didn't develop Evie's character in any further in that book and we kind of regressed a bit even though we learned more about her past which I did enjoy just I want to see Evie start to thrive more as she's entering adulthood and I kind of want future books to not be so entwined with her past I still want her to be involved in the investigations but I'd rather it not be so to do with her past and backstory and more to do with what she's doing in the present and how her life is moving on from this trauma. The book that made me cry the most was a no-brainer because it's the only book that's made me cry this year and that is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Controversial book but one that I really did enjoy despite knowing the controversy surrounding it. I do understand why people don't like this book. I really understand the reasons why. I just really enjoyed reading it though and it made me cry so much and I was so worried because I got to like over halfway through and I hadn't cried yet and I was like this is the book that breaks everyone. If it doesn't break me am I heartless? But it did. <laughs> It really did. This book follows a group of four boys throughout a period of about maybe maybe like 40 or 50 years all the way from college where they met and it particularly focuses on two of the boys from this group, one of whom has experienced the most trauma of anyone who has ever existed. He's never had a happy moment, ever. <laughs> and you learn about every minute of it. It's really hard to read, really depressing, but it is so unputdownable. One of the controversies that I know about this book is that the author has said that they set out to make the reader cry, like with the intention of making the reader cry. I don't know if I agree that that should be an intention when you write a book. Like I agree with setting the intentions of making your reader feel specific emotions but I don't know if setting out to make the reader cry is maybe a way you should go about writing a book especially when you're writing about LGBTQI plus characters and you're putting them through such extensive trauma that is just really horrific to read. That being said she did achieve what she set out to do and I did cry a lot. So take from that what you will. The next prompt is a book that made me happy. There's actually been quite a few books that made me happy but I wanted to choose one that I hadn't chosen yet and so I decided to go for Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood, my favourite Ali Hazelwood book. This is one of her steminist romances which follows a steamy romance between B and Levi set in NASA. It's kind of enemies to lovers but maybe a more soft version of enemies to lovers. Very miscommunication but not in an annoying way. It was just a really fun book to read. The romance was top notch, the steam was amazing, I didn't want to put it down, I loved the characters, I loved the setting of NASA, I loved their backstory, I loved the ending of the book. The climactic moment of this book, it's like been a romance up until that and then it just becomes some sort of like thriller. <laughs> The tone shift was honestly quite iconic. I just remember feeling so happy and excited to talk about it as well in my videos, which is always a good sign. The next prompt is the most beautiful book I have bought or received this year. We've got two because the first one doesn't really count because I don't have it yet. I have pre-ordered the signed special edition copy of Rewitched by Lucy Wood from Waterstones. It's got sprayed edges. It's absolutely beautiful. I'll put a picture here. I am so excited, but obviously I don't have that yet. And technically I've not paid for it yet because it's not out yet. So the other book that I'm going to say is The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi, which my mother-in-law gifted me just out of the blue because she saw that I said I wanted to read it in one of my videos. So that was so, so kind of her. I've not read it yet. I think I'm maybe going to read it soon actually because every time I look at it, I just think how beautiful it is. Look at this cover, the little birds on it. It's got like this glow behind the writing. Fishes. The back is the same, gold embossing. I just think it's stunning. Oh my gosh, I've not actually looked in it. The map as well, gorgeous. From what I know about this book, this is about an ex-pirate who is now a mother living a slow life. When she learns of a job that no bandit could ever refuse, she decides she'll go on one last pirating adventure which will secure her a fortune that will set her family up forever. Love that concept. I've heard really good things about this book and the cover is gorgeous. And then the final prompt is what books do I need to read by the end of 2024? This is an interesting one. I don't have specific books but 
I do have a specific challenge that I need to complete. Don't need to like, <laughs> but I want to complete. I signed up for the Storygraph Reads the World challenge and I am 20% through. I've read two books out of 10. Basically this challenge, Storygraph has provided us with 10 countries and we have to read a book by an author from that country that is primarily set in that country. So I've currently read a book from Chile and a book from Ghana, but I've still to read books from these countries, Germany, Indonesia, Jamaica, Lebanon, Poland, Sri Lanka, Sudan and Venezuela. I am going to make headway with this because I have a book on my shelf from, I can't remember what country it's from now, I think maybe it's, in, it's Indonesia and I've also ordered two more books. I also can't remember what countries they're from, but they're arriving today. So I've got three books there ready to be read. But I need to figure out other books from the countries that I haven't decided yet. That's the thing I'm struggling with most because I want to pick books that I'm going to enjoy. But because the books I marketed are very like Western books a lot of the time, I have limited knowledge of books from other countries, which is why I'm doing the challenge because I want to have knowledge of other countries' books and what's popular and kind of expand my understanding of other cultures. But it just means that I have to put in a little bit of extra work and time kind of perusing and browsing books from other countries. So if you have any recommendations that fit those guidelines for any of the countries that I just mentioned, please let me know. I've been good so far with my choices. I gave My Tender Matador four stars, that was the chili book, and I gave Wife of the Gods four stars, which was my Ghana book. That's really good, I think. So I've been good so far at choosing books. See how it continues. But that is all the prompts for this tag. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know how the first half of your year has been going. What have been your favourite books? What have been your disappointments? What are you most looking forward to? I would love to know and talk to some people about books in the comments. I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!